The other kind of loop, aside from conditional, is called iterative, or more commonly, these are known as for loops. So here's what it looks like. Um, it's the word for, and then in parentheses here, instead of putting one thing just a condition, you actually sort of condense um, the whole thing. And so you create a loop control variable and tell it what to start at. You set the condition, that means it should continue. And then you set how you want the loop control variable to update. So for example, if I wanted a loop to count from one to five, I can make my loop control variable right here in the heading of the for loop. So let's call this um, counter. I want to go from one. I want it to keep going until I hit five. And I want it to count by ones. So I'll do an uh, increment expression there. And then inside, all I have to do is see out what's happening. So I've kind of condensed some stuff that I would have had to make above um, or inside of the while loop. And I have this variable here. Um, this is my starting value. This is called my initialization expression. This is what should be true if I want to actually run the loop. Um, this is called my continuation condition. And then I have how I want to edit the loop variable at the end of each iteration of this loop. And this is called the update expression. Okay. So if I run this thing, I am going to see 1 through 5 on the screen. So there they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now some things to notice. If I am outside the loop and I try to make any use of this variable, it's going to tell me that it doesn't exist. So if I attempt to output it down here, it underlines it. Here's my error. Identifier counter is undefined. If I declare my loop control variable in the heading of the for loop, then it literally only exists between these two curlies. That We call that its scope. It's only usable in this little local scope of the for loop. Okay. If I were to create this thing above my loop, I can still use it as my loop control variable, but I would not need to define it as an integer. And you'll notice this already became not underlined anymore. And when I run this, I'm going to get the numbers 1 through 6. 1 through 5 is what happened inside my for loop. The last time my loop executed, the counter went up again and became 6, which made this false. So it didn't print inside. But when I get after the for loop, it does print the 6. So if I want to know what my counter ended at, I might need this variable declared outside of the loop. But a lot of times, inside the loop is going to be fine. So I'm going to put this back the way it was. Okay. What if I want to count down instead of up? Well, I'm just going to change what I'm putting here in these numbers. So let's count down from 5. I know I want to count in the opposite direction, so I'm going to change this to minus minus. And here... I actually want to stop when it hits 1, and I'm going to change the direction of this comparison operator so it's greater than or equal to 1. So I'm starting high. I'm going while it's greater than this or equal to it, and I'm counting down by 1. Let's see. There we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Another thing I can do is I can put these loops inside of each other. So let's say... I want to print some uh, well, times tables, the 5 by 5 times tables. So let's say this is my outer loop. I can put a loop inside here, um, inner count 1. I'm going to basically make it the same. And what I can do is I can see out um, the product of these two things. So let's say, let's do counter times inner count. And I want it to space out a little so they're not all smushed together. So I'm going to put a space there. Um, if I run this right now, it's going to run that inner loop all five times for every one time of the outer loop. Right now they're all in the same line, so it doesn't really look like a times table. One little addition right here, a C out of an endl, will make it drop down after each row. Okay. So this first top one here, one, two, three, four, five, when this counter is one, this loop runs from one to five all the way through. Here's my products, one, two, three, four, five, because it's just one, two, three, four, five multiplied by one. 
separated by spaces. When this loop is done, I get an end out, which drops me to the next line. My outer loop then becomes two. When I hit my inner loop again, the counting restarts at one because here's my initialization back to one. So now I've got the two products. Then my outer counter goes to three and I've got the line with the three products. So I can use nested loops to do some interesting sort of two dimensional um, things just like this.